The following problem is a system of linear inequalities. To solve this, we're going to graph both inequalities separately, and then we're looking for the area that uh, overlaps, uh, the, the area that um, solves both of them. Uh, so to do this, we're going to use, to graph them, uh, for this problem, I use the uh, x and y intercept method. Find the x-intercept first by putting in 0 for y, and so that gives me negative 3x, Minus 0 is greater than 6, which that 0 just doesn't mean anything, so it's negative 3x greater than 6. So I just need to divide both sides by negative 3, and you get x is negative 2. So the uh, y-intercept, or x-intercept is negative 2. Put in 0 for x to find the y-intercept, so negative 3 times 0 minus y greater than 6. Be careful with the negative. It is a negative y, so you are going to have to divide both sides by negative 1. Uh, I did change the direction of sign, though it doesn't actually matter. But usually when we divide by negative in an inequality, we change the direction of the sign. Now we've got to graph it. So we graph negative uh, 2, 0, which is just over 2 to the, le to the left 2 on the x-axis. And then we graph 0, negative 6, the y-intercept, which is down negative 6. Notice that I'm making a dotted line. This is a dotted line because it's a uh, greater than sign. Uh, only greater than or equal to is a solid sign. Now I have to decide which side do I shade it on, right? The, the line isn't the answer. The line is just the boundary of the answer. Uh, I put in 0, 0. Well, 0 is not greater than 6, and so that means I need to shade on the opposite side from the origin. So that's why I'm shading on the left. The origin, or 0, 0, is on the right side. Since that's false, then that means I need to shade on the opposite side, which is left. Now I'm going to use a different color. It's a good on these problems to use a different color if you can, but if you can't, that's okay. You just need to shade. Be very careful when you shade. Again, I'm going to use the uh, x and y intercept method. I'm going to put 0 in for y to find the x intercept, 0 for x to find the y intercept. So I need to plug in 0 there for the y. So I'm going to plug in 0 for y here. Well, 5 times 0 just goes away because it's just 0. So we're left with 2x equal or 2x greater than or equal to negative 10. So when you divide by 10, you get x is negative 5. Now we go in and put 0 for x, so 2 times 0 minus 5y is greater than or equal to negative 10. Notice that it is a negative 5y there, so don't forget that negative. We divide both sides by negative 5, and we get x is less than or equal to positive 2. So our, um, our y is less than or equal to positive 2. So our y intercepts 2. So our x-intercept was negative 5, our y-intercept was 2. So we plot both those points, uh, x equal negative 5 first. Which is over there in the left, 5 spaces. And then we're going to go up 2 because it's a positive 2 for the, the y-intercept. And notice I'm going to draw a straight line, or a solid line. The line's solid because of equal to. So even though that line is the boundary, it's also part of the solution. Now I check 0, 0 again, and this time when I check 0, 0, I find out that 0, 0 is actually true. Right? 0 is greater than or equal to negative 10. That's a true statement. So we need to shade on the side of 0, 0. Notice I'm shading up and down just to help me identify which, where the overlap is. Well, it's pretty clear where the overlap is, where there's red and blue. So I'm going to pick a, get out a different color. I'm going to get out black and shade that in just so that I know exactly what the answer is. The other two shadings aren't part of the answer. Right, it's only the shading that they have in common that is the answer, which we shade in real dark black here. So every point in that region, no matter what that point is, is going to make, uh, make your inequality true.